Hello and welcome. My name is Maura Cook and I'm District Director for the Health Department here in Addison County. I'm also a member of the Addison County Committee on Substance Use and Prevention. This, the Committee on Substance Abuse Substance Use and Prevention is focused on preventing uh, the disease of addiction. Uh, we do a lot of education and outreach. Um, we're also focused on advocating for more treatment options in the community and just to build awareness around the disease of addiction in, in Addison County as well as across Vermont. Um, I'm really pleased to be here today with Jessica Thompson. Jessica is the Continued Care Specialist for Valley Vista of Virgins, and she's going to talk uh, to us about the services they provide and the people that they serve. Thank you so much for being here today, Jessica. Thanks for having me. So can we start by just having you tell us a little bit about um, the services at Valley Vista and what Valley Vista is? So Valley Vista is a inpatient treatment facility for substance use um, disorders, those struggling with substance abuse. Um, in short. That's great. So you have, you're, you're newly located in Fregens. You haven't been there that long. Um, can you tell us a, a little bit about where you're located and where, where other sites are for Valley Vista? Sure, so we have two locations. Um, Valley Vista in Virgins is located at one Alden Place, and there is also another location up in Bradford, and that is 23 Upper Plain in Bradford, Vermont. Okay, great. And we've been in Virgins since last April. So, okay, so you're new. So who are you serving, and sort of what's the purpose of your Virgins location? So Valley Vista's mission is to provide state-of-the-art evidence-based, um, best practice-driven, co-occurring inpatient treatment for those um, struggling with substance use disorder, yeah. which is often complicated by mental health conditions. So that was a lot of big um, technical terms, I think, in terms of substance use um, treatment. So can you break that down a little bit for us? So. Um, so treatment is um, always evolving yeah. um, just because as science evolves, we learn more about addiction, how trauma um, is a huge factor when it comes to addiction, especially with technology. We're learning more about how substance abuse changes the actual composition of your brain. Yeah. So as more evidence is gathered, then we can modify treatment to keep up with, um, with the evidence. So treatment is specifically designed around the science. And we go with what is most recent and also most evidence-based proven effective models of treatment. So, and you're doing that in for gens for um who, who are you serving there? We serve in Virgins. We serve women ages 18 and up. In Bradford, they serve adolescents, male and female, mm -hmm. women and men. And how many people are you serving? How many women are you serving in? Virgins? In Virgins, we have 18 beds, so we can serve up to 18 women at a time. That's great. And so what does treatment look like? for uh, women and why and what brings them to you? Well, people can come into treatment for many different reasons. Um, some people come in on their own free will mm -hmm. um, because the harmful effects of addiction, so the negative consequences are starting to outweigh the benefits. Mm -hmm. I think it's important to keep in mind that addiction substance use is a behavior and it was serving a need at some point in time and at some point throughout this journey negative consequences outweigh the benefits right. so that's often how we see people come in on their own free will um, dcf can also department of children family yep department yeah. of children and yeah. families can yeah. refer folks in so 
Um, and also we have women coming in from corrections. Uh -huh. That's great. So that you serve 18 women, and what are you primarily treating them for? Is it mostly opiate addiction, or is it a combination? It is a combination. Mm -hmm. So the substance is, it varies. It can be opiates, alcohol, crack, cocaine, benzodiazepines, um, marijuana. So really, any substance. Um, Valley Vista is a alcohol drug or other addictive um, treat or other addiction excuse me treatment facility so while the primary um, I would say substance of choice right now is opiates oh it is okay yeah. so that's primarily what you're seeing yeah um, and maybe not uh, and also alcohol too is that also a high Alcohol, yeah, so primarily opiates and alcohol, but it's very rarely one or the other. Right. So usually so there's more than one substance in there. Yes, great. And then, you know, the mental health component as well. So mm -hmm. depression, anxiety, PTSD, mm -hmm. uh, the list goes on and on. So we very much try to treat both substance use disorders and then the mental health condition as well. Right. So, as, and probably really the whole person and, uh, um, and helping them to really get their lives back. Because as you yeah. said, at, by the time they've come to you, the, it's, things have maybe gone awry here. Yeah, so it's very much about the big, the whole picture of mind, body, and soul. Mm -hmm. So, in addiction, that's why it's technically a disease because it does actually alter your brain structure, how chemicals are released, and how your brain functions. So, there's that component on healing the brain, detox, yeah. the elimination of harmful or toxic substances, and then we can really, once that step is complete, then we can really start to work on the emotional and behavioral components of it. And then there's the whole aftercare piece as well, where it's the continuation of treatment. Yeah, great. So this, so I was gonna ask you about the um, sort of a typical day, but let's start from the beginning. They've probably come in, they've, they've recently used, or they're they may even be still high. So is there a detox period and what does that look like? So yes, typically when people come in, they are um, either under the influence or have used very, very recently. Mm -hmm. So they will go through that acute withdrawal, mm -hmm. which is where you get like the physical and mental symptoms of withdrawal. So for opiates, that is like the goose flesh, dilation of pupils, extreme body, muscle aches, mm -hmm. um, restlessness, agitation. Um, wow. So when someone comes in, the first thing they do is check in with the medical staff. That's sure. where we'll do a breathalyzer, a urine analysis, um, and we'll also send that over to labs to get very specific levels so we know what the length of detox is going to be um, for that individual. And detox can vary depending on length of use, substance, and um, tolerance. So how much the person has been using, how long, mm -hmm. and what specifically the substance is. So you're probably not doing a lot of counseling during that time. At that point, they're just feeling pretty lousy and need to get through this, what's going to probably be a very rough period. Correct, right? yep. And then what happens afterwards? What happens to, so, to women who get through detox and are ready to really start on their recovery Within journey? three days, they'll meet with their primary um, therapist, and that's when they will complete their full assessment. When they come in, the medical does the medical assessment right off the bat. And then once they're able to actually um, respond to questions and reflect on their past, age of use, last use, so on and so forth, they'll complete the assessment with their therapist. And then from there, they will complete a treatment plan. 
So what are your goals here while you're in recovery? Um, they'll work with their therapist to identify what the goals are and then come up with an individualized treatment plan so we can design their stay with us to meet those treatment goals. That's great, that's great. And then there's aftercare. Mm -hmm. And so what's that look like for, for Val uh, Valley Vista and the women you serve? So um, my position is the continued care specialist. So that is very, very individual. Um, spend a lot of time with the clients and their primary therapist, really identifying what would best support this individual in the community. Mm -hmm. um, so while for one person, they may have individual um, counseling, family counseling, um, psychiatric care to manage psychiatric medications, sure. um, the transitional level of care would be either partial hospitalization, which is Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 3 p.m., or IOP, which is intensive outpatient treatment. Right. And that is, <coughs> excuse me, three days a week, three hour sessions. Um, mm -hmm. And then there's also the biomedical component. What are your medical conditions? Um, are you on medications that can be handled with a primary care provider? A lot of times people don't have a yeah. established primary care provider, someone who can really start to build a relationship with the client and have a file on what their medical conditions are and to really be able to support them. A lot of times I refer folks to the Division of Vocational Rehabilitation yeah. to start looking for meaningful employment, developing a resume, volunteering, or even getting their toes wet and dipping into maybe what they think would be interesting. Sure. Um, yeah, meetings, AA, NA, of course. smart recovery, making recovery easier, and we also try to refer people to Turning Point and align them with a recovery coach, someone who can work with them one-on-one -on -one to help guide them through that early recovery process. So where are the women um, that you, you help coming from? Are they mostly Vermonters? Are they local? Or are, you know, tell us a little mostly bit Mostly Vermonters, um, but we have had folks from Maine, um, New York, New Hampshire, Massachusetts, Connecticut. Mm -hmm. So all over New England. Oh, that's, yeah. I mean, unfortunately, <laughs> there's the need. The need is great, and I'm sure you guys tend to be full. Is that, a, is that an accurate? Um... We are um, at capacity right now. Sure. Um, but anyone who is interested in coming to treatment could call the Brad. Admissions is done through the Bradford location. Okay. And that number is 222-5201. And they will complete a phone screening with the individual to be sure that they meet criteria for inpatient treatment. Mm -hmm. And then they will um, either get immediately admitted if we have room or um, they'll get put on a wait list and as soon as we have a bed open, we'll give them a call. What's the typical length of stay? The typical length of stay is uh, around 21 days, but okay. we've had people, um, clients stay almost three months and we've also had people who got what they needed out of treatment in two weeks so it's it's very individual but the average length of stay is about 21 days okay and so then your wait your wait list may not be a very long wait if people are really eager for treatment is there can you get in relatively quickly? Um, I don't have an approximate time for a wait list because it does ebb and flow throughout the year. Sure. Um, over holidays and New Year's, it's very, very quick for folks to get in. Um, what I'm noticing now with spring coming is we're full. I, I don't have an average length of time for a wait list. Sure, sure. But from what I've noticed, people get in in a few weeks or less. Yeah, and so sometimes it may be almost non-existent and other times it may be a few weeks, but we, we don't have exact numbers. Right. Yeah. That's, so what does success look like for the women that you're serving in for GENS? Um, 
I would say as long as they're present and they are reaching their treatment goals and you know as I said that's very individual mm -hmm. then that's what would grant that person a successful completion so when someone gets a certificate of completion that means that they have reached all of their treatment goals oh so at the end of you know at the end of their 21 days they may have there's a possibility of getting some sort of acknowledgement of the work that they've done and where they've gotten to? Yep, so every client that successfully meets their treatment goals will get a certificate of completion, a coin from Valley Vista, um, a t-shirt, and a graduation ceremony. Oh, that's great, that's yeah. great. So it's really validating that the, the journey that they've really started. And do you think of, of um, their stay at Valley Vista as the start starting point of recovery absolutely so you're coordinating it sounds like then you're coordinating with um, agencies and organizations all over New England because you know when these women leave your program they're going back to their homes or are they going to s somewhere else it depends there are people who have safe stable secure housing and then there are folks who have um, are not able to return to their right. environment. We have ladies who are fleeing domestic violence. Right. Um, and then we also have those who are in interested in transitioning to sober living. Oh, great. So, and you are trying to coordinate housing for, or yep. for those women who uh, may not have a safe place to go. Exactly. So we often partner with Women's Safe or Steps to End Domestic Violence for Emergency Shelter. Uh -huh. um, we have also been very successful for those who are interested in transi transitioning to sober living but don't have the financial component in place yet, <coughs> working with um, churches in the community who uh -huh. have been amazing community partners and made charitable contributions to ladies who have been accepted but don't have the money in place. Um, also, for those who are not eligible for sober living due to um, pending charges, violent criminal sure. history, um, those, or with physical and medical conditions where they're not able to live independently then we get as much time as we can for that person um, and we'll even go as far as to help that person apply for long-term care Medicaid and find them a placement in adult family care so that's where an individual goes and stays with a provider in home uh -huh. and yeah. um, Medicaid put, pays that provider a stipend so it sounds like you're really kind of trying to pull a lot of strings and figure out what the best resources are for each individual. Yeah, it's very, person. very individualized, very. Yeah. Yep. yeah. There is no cookie cutter treatment or aftercare. It's very much designed to serve that individual the best we can. That's great. And then it sounds like it's just a, um, an amazing resources for helping, for helping people get back on their feet. Yeah. So wh who works at the Valley Vista uh, for Jen's location and you know the types of staff? That sure, so we have um, Amanda Hudak who is um, oversees both Bradford and the Virgen site so she oversees everybody oh. in both locations. Then below her is Sarah Poisson who is the women's program director. Mm -hmm. Um, Laura Evans, who is a primary therapist, Haley Newman, who is a primary therapist, myself, um, who's the continued care specialist, Shauna, who is the nurse practitioner, Courtney, who is a registered nurse, sorry if I forget anybody, <laughs> um, a whole support team of medical staff, and then recovery aides who aid in the recovery process and they are the ones who are with the clients all day every day do you have 24-hour staffing there yes we do yep medical staff and recovery aides are always in the building so it sounds like it's just a pretty holistic team to 
provide comprehensive supports. Yeah. 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 Yep. That's that's what I was thinking. You know, and part of the mission is to provide that safe and secure therapeutic environment where um, we can just ensure that the clients are receiving the validation and um, the respect in and to maintain the environment that is conducive to recovery at all point in time. That's great. So tell me a little bit about, um, in terms of medication assisted treatment, we've heard a lot about the hub and the spoke program that the state of Vermont has. So is this a hub, <coughs> is this a spoke? Can you just talk a little bit about what, what it is and what the differences are? Sure, so we are neither a hub or okay. a spoke. There you go. <laughs> um, those coming in who are in acute withdrawal from opiates, we at the Valley um, Vista for Jen's location, we use Suboxone um, taper. Uh -huh. So we'll start somebody at depending on how they're scoring, which is the presenting signs of withdrawal, kind of depicts on the level that we start them at. It's never more than eight milligrams of Suboxone, and then slowly they're tapered down. Great. And then if they're interested on staying on maintenance, whether um, that's Suboxone, Methadone, Vivitrol, which is the naltrexone shot or naltrexone in the pill form, we find them a provider in the community. So that is most often a hub. Okay. The Howard Center Chittenden Clinic um, up in Burlington, Bradford Psychiatric right. Associates, BART. Um, so typically those who are interested in staying on Suboxone, we don't do methadone at the Virgin's location, but we they do methadone up at the Bradford location. Mm -hmm. So if somebody was interested in methadone, they would have to taper off of the Suboxone and then go to the clinic and start on the methadone. Um, but if we find them a Suboxone provider, then we induct them on the Suboxone, they'll stay on it the whole time they're there, and then continue that dosing with the hub. Um, typically, we try to start them at the hub level because it is daily dosing. Right. They will meet with a social worker right. once a week, right. a case worker, yeah. also holds them accountable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, that way, there is no diversion. They're taking the medication the way that they should be so that they're safe. So it sounds like, again, the, the medication along with the counseling and the wraparound services, it's all individualized depending on uh, what the wom uh, woman's needs are when they Correct. come in the door. We only have a few minutes left, so what I would love for you to do is to give the name, do, do you know your website off the top of the head, uh, the top of your head and the phone number again, so that if anybody is concerned about their substance use, a family member substance use, they they know they need help. They they can contact Valley Vista and Bradford to start that assessment process. Sure. So anybody who is looking for treatment or who has a family member or a friend who's dealing with substance abuse should call admissions at two 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 five two zero one just ask to speak to admissions okay. um, Great. or you can I don't know the name of the website I probably should but you can Google Valley Vista Perfect. and it'll bring you right there and I believe you can also come start that process online if you're interested and we'll have this information on the addiction help Vermont website addiction help VT website as well so that you know people can access Valley v Vista's website through that so I just want to thank you so much. It sounds like you work small miracles in, in the way that you <laughs> coordinate services, make sure that the women who receive your services walk out empowered to take the next steps to their recovery with stable housing, the supports they need. So I just want to thank you so much for the work that you do to help people on their recovery journey. Thank you. And I appreciate your time today. Thank you so much for watching us. Uh, again, the website is addictionhelpvt.com. Thank you.